keeping the same color, which is nice. <laughs> I approve of that. That's handy. Just waiting on Destiny here. We'll be ready to go again. So thanks, guys, for tuning in. The Prodigy Team Star Lake has been an absolute blast to cast. And uh, a blast to cast. Wait, why is Cats in the room? You know. Hello, Cats. <laughs> Me, I observe, says Cats. Probably not in the rules. And Protex says, no! We don't want OBS. Obviously, Cats is a teammate of Minigun. I don't know if it's a trust issue or what, but really, that's kind of the standard for tournaments and has been for a while. No OBS in these... Um, you know, clutch matches. Yep. But Cats really should not be surprised by this at all, especially since he's on the same team as one of the players. And this thing, you can watch the stream, which is the same thing. So there you go, ProTech. <sighs> uh, but anyway, so we're going to go ahead and get things started here momentarily. Destiny has switched himself over to pink, which means he's the same color as well, which means I have all four right. Bam. All right. So our players are in. Twilight Fortress is going to be the map. Now, both teams have a Zerg player, so we're not going to see a super, super quick wall. But I think everyone is ready. Here we go. Things are going to get started. Everyone says go, go. Good luck. Have fun to our players. Yeah. <laughs> the whole time I was thinking um, I wanted to see Protect's profile again, but we're too slow again. <laughs> oh. It's it's just weird to see thousands of wins. Like, I, I don't know too many people. Even pros, they don't, they don't ladder thousands and thousands of games. They might have a few hundred custom games played and um, maybe a thousand ladder games played. But these guys just play so much. It's insane but uh 2v2 they have a propensity to be shorter games especially in ladder if you've got that set build order and your opponents don't know how to stop it it can be very difficult so minigun uh is going to be our blue protoss once again down in the bottom left corner with his teammate destiny it says root destiny but root has since perished since Aww. destiny made that name unfortunately he is a bit of a fr i don't know if he's a free agent i don't know if he's actually looking for a team but yeah. currently he i think is. that's the term though so that works well he's unaffiliated but i don't know if yeah. he's looking so anyway power is going to be the red terran up in the top right corner with his teammate hack protech the orange zerg there we are so team pro or power tech bleh, that's what i meant to say i was gonna be like pro power or something and that just sounds stupid power no. tech is so much cooler pro power is what i'm naming my team <laughs> well, I'm sorry, it sounds stupid. Uh, so we have Power Tech versus Team Destiny. We'll see if these players decide to do any sort of cheese. Looks like both players are getting quite a number of workers. And we actually have an overpool or an 11 pool coming up now for Destiny. So there it is. Pop. And Pro Tech, on the other hand, just going up to a 14 pool, it appears. Yep, and Protech and Power do have a little bit of breathing room now since they do have this one game lead. It is a best of three, so if they can manage to put this one away, they will move on in the lower bracket of the Prodigy Team Star League. Destiny and Minigun on the cusp of elimination. If they lose this, they bomb out and <laughs> don't get any prize money, I believe. Sad stuff. Nope, prizes for uh, first, second, and third, and there is a $750 prize to first place. So... It's uh, quite a bit on. I, I, I'm trying to think if there's been a bigger dedicated 2v2 tournament. I don't think there has been. Dedicated 2v2? No, usually what you see is, hey, let's all play some 2v2s. Open signups, no prize. Yeah, or you <laughs> get a lot of tournaments that are primarily 1v1 with the 2v2 kind of thrown in there. The Collegiate Star League, the uh, Collegiate Esports Invitational, the um, EG, Masters, EG Cup. Masters Cup. Thank you, that's what I was trying to think of. Those have all employed that sort of a uh, an approach. And we had, I believe, the Gosu Coaching League might have had a 2v2. I actually yeah, don't remember. I, be I believe you ago. are correct. The Gosu Coaching Premier League, I believe, did as well. And uh, War, War Turtle, War Turtle back in the beta actually had a team league going um, it was something like $50 prize but we did see actually Root, EG, um, all these North American teams participating in those I think they had five or six weeks in a row of that so mm -hmm. that was kind of entertaining back in the, in the day back in my day back in my day <laughs> when Starcraft 2 was 8-bit <laughs> Uh, let's see here. So Minigun is putting up a wall at the front, trying to put that up as quick as possible. Destiny did go after a relatively fast expanse, but uh, Power or Protech, I keep trying to say Power Tech now. Uh, Protech is actually matching him base for base and is down in workers, though, quite a bit. Uh, he is down by three workers already. Destiny reinforcing those quite well. 
He is just about to finish up that next hatchery. So let's see here. Minigun has not shown us any sort of tech yet. He is on to gas, but he's producing sentries, so it's probably more indicative of a nice gateway play than anything else. Power, on the other hand, does have two racks up, but he is finishing up his second gas, so no expansion out of him very soon, I would imagine, unless he's saving up for that right now, but it looks like he does have other units queued up, so he will just be producing a big old force. Power makes me think he should be adding a third barrack sometime soon with as fast as that stim is being researched, and since uh, Protech is set up to build a lot of lanes off of those two bases and that zergling speed, I would expect a heavy marine and speedling attack, but instead Protech is actually building a round of eight drones. Uh, factory coming up now for power. I really thought that setup sort of lent itself to an early attack, but now it's sort of uh, switching gears a little bit. And now, yeah, just waiting for that command center to appear at that natural. And Minigun actually doing an expand as well. A one gate fast expand into Robo. So while that comes up, we'll see if they're able to defend any sort of harassment. Power seems to be very good at that aggressive uh, drop everywhere sort of play, multi-prong drops, things like that, just kind of keep keeping people off guard. Um, we do have another base about to be started here for power, so he's not going to be able to utilize this factory all that fast, going right into a starport instead. So all players are going to be on an expansion here pretty soon, and it looks like we may be settling in for the long haul. Yeah, Lair coming up now for actually both of our Zerg players, and a Roach Warren about to be completed here for Protech. Destiny looks like, did he just skip the Roach Warren completely? Yeah, he has he double did. evolution chamber. Double evo chamber, Lair about to be uh, halfway done or so, still no clue if he's going to be going for ranged attacks or melee attacks yet. Um, I, I just don't know, and Colossus uh, actually going to be showing up for minigun here soon. He does have a robotics bay planted off of just that one base. Soon his uh, second base will be saturated, and he'll be able to afford that. Might even want a second robotics facility here soon to uh, supplement. Yeah, and this was the build that minigun was actually kind of trying to go for in the first game. He went after a little bit later expands. Um, but then he started, as soon as he started teching up to Robo and things like that, that's what kind of coincided with the big pressure that he was getting. And, um, yeah, so I'm really curious to see how this ends up playing out. Protech, he has that Roach Warren finish. He is going to Roach Speed and plus one weapons. So it looks like both these players are gearing up for a very, very big... This almost seems like, you know, July style, let's macro in the beginning and then just do endless waves of aggression here at the end. So four racks, single factory, MMM play out of power. Interesting. But neither of these teams have decided to do any sort of aggression yet. We Pro do have an infestation pick coming down for Destiny. Protech is still just railing out these roaches like eight at a time. Infestation pick would be a very wise choice as fungals and speedlings could tie themselves around all those roaches that uh, Hack Protech is making right now. So we'll see how heavily he invests in the investor since he hasn't really spent any gas yet. I imagine that he'll be able to crank out quite a few uh, in the near future. It looks like mm, a lot of lings still just being built and he is going for the melee uh, upgrades, attack upgrades instead of the ranged ones. So I was curious about that earlier. Pathogen lands being researched now. Extended thermal lance is about halfway done. I do see some orange and red blob movement over by the Zelnaga Tower. So it looks like they have hit a sort of uh, timing that they're comfortable with trying to do some damage here. Yeah, absolutely, but they're going to be coming up against 1-1 one, one, uh, Zerglings as well with the support of Force Fields and Colossi, so Minigun and Destiny have an honest chance at holding this. Uh, however, Destiny's not going to start any... Well, he actually probably will start Infestors now because the time of the Infestor build is after Pathogen Glads would finish. Yeah, they would have the extra energy. Gas available. Yeah, he just spent a ton of it on six Infestors there. Yep, and they're going to need that pretty quick. It looks like uh, Minigun has enough energy, though, that they can hold this army at bay for quite a while until those Infestors come up, and then he can use the Infestors to do stun and damage at the same time. So uh, Protech is trying to make his way back in. This is nice patience out of Minigun. They're trying to expose force fields out of Minigun, but he is being patient, waiting until too many units commit, and then Destiny can have up those Infestors. Look at that. The Overlord's actually dropping creep near that choke area so that when the wings do have to come in and the investors do have to come in, they'll be able to be moving a little bit quicker uh, once they get into battle. First round of the investors are out now. There they are, and they did have their pathogen glands finished on time for a bunch of fungals. So there they go in the front line. There's no siege tanks or anything. And the big, big fungal on the roaches. This is something you see in ZVZ all the time, roach and investor wars. And actually, a couple of investors did get picked off there, so at least uh, the 
Protec and Power have that going for them. They're going to retreat, though. Yeah, you can't attack into that. They know it. So uh, they're going to back up. At the same time, Protec's going to expand to his third. We do have all those Zerglings streaming in now for Destiny. And was there, I don't, was there some sort of a drop? I see a couple low-health pros, but that's okay. And all these Zerglings were streaming back. That's what queued me up to it. But it looks like we're okay. Uh, Destiny is going to go ahead and move out with Minigun now. And this is kind of a fun unit composition out of both these players. Taking a look at the army tab, it looks like... Protech is way ahead in terms of army. His teammate may have been feeding him for a while until he got his tech up there. Um, but it does appear as though Destiny and Minigun have a pretty good advantage in terms of armies altogether. They're going to go in for the flank here. Destiny trying to position his units around. He's trying to go those units back to those fungal growths. And a couple do end up going down. Oh, wow, a lot of roaches were actually caught there with that first group. And they are going to fall very quickly. And that is a good way to neutralize that army advantage. Links. Probably going to be getting in on the action once these force fields are down, yes. And they are going to want to try and pin all these marines and roaches in place long enough for the fumbles to reappear. And man, those units are clumped so tightly that two or three fumbles can do a massive amount of damage. The Colossi obviously in a very good position right here to do a lot of damage as well. So the unit composition is just pretty good. <laughs> it's just it's just real pretty good. good. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> yes, and it all is. Those Ling's actually biting one of those investors following it. Here we go. Ling's, are you ever going to get involved? Fungles. Oh, what? I think Fungles did go down there, yeah. but the plus I ripped through them so quickly. Didn't even need a <laughs> almost. Yeah, but Destiny's doing a nice job of saving up some energy here, so he's going to be able to continue pushing. He is now researching Neural Parasite, and of course that'll become a little more helpful here in the future. Fungal does stop a few more of those roaches. That poor drone was also fungled in there as well, wondering, what will I ever do to you? But, uh... <laughs> Why was I in this unit composition at all? <laughs> I was mining a minute ago. Oh. Uh, but now, that's a lot of investors now, actually, for Protec as well. There's ten more roaches on the way. Whoops, hit the overlay there. But, uh, oh, yeah, li was... little do you know about the uh, 14 and a half minute drone timing attack. So let's see here. The base is, the gold is ready to go for Protec in the top left-hand corner. Income is by far the best for him. So doing a very nice job. Has 57 harvesters as well. He'd be able to reproduce his army. Destiny did just finish up that hatchery down at the bottom right. He has not transferred any drones over to it yet, although I assume that that process would happen soon. And he has just finished up Hive Tech. I'm curious to see how he takes advantage of that. Neural Parasite. Don't believe he has a Spire up anywhere yet. Um... Could see ultras, perhaps. He's got melee upgrades already rolling, so it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. And um, obviously, with that gold base up and running, he'll be able to afford it. So we'll see if he does put that cavern down or not. You know what's really good on these giant? Oh, there's the ultra cavern. Ooh, yeah. You know what's really good on these two v two maps? These really big ones, like deconstructed and Twilight Fortress. What's that? Nidus worms. I was thinking <laughs> you were gonna say it, and it is awesome. And it's yes, also it is. Really good for ultra lists because they can just pop up and you're like, oh, there's ultras in my base. Yep, absolutely. And it looks like that is going to be what they're kind of planning to do, I would imagine. Positioning themselves around to the left, they are going to trap this gold. Oh, unfortunately, these infestors are going to get turn caught. Around, Destiny investors. has to turn around and at least throw down a couple of fungals. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just those full energy oh, infestors getting rocked. Oh, so much loss there. The gold does go down there. Destiny going to make his way back. Look at the way these units are just clumped up. I, I believe that this is a one-person control here for the time being. He He's um, coming from power to land on those investors could actually swing this battle in a huge way. Destiny obviously showed that he wasn't in full control of his investors earlier, so it could be bad again. Oh, fungals kill Zerglings in one shot if you did not. Oh, whoa, 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 oh, they're upgraded or something? They regenerate one HP, I believe, actually, uh, from a fungal. So they, they actually <laughs> take the full damage.